Bros and a Brofist to you all, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Drama Time, occurring on a wonderful Friday. And it's wonderful because following drama, you will have seen a premiere going up on YouTube of our part two of our visit to the wonderful sunny California and Blizzard HQ. It's been a little while, sorry for the delay, but as you know, our office was destroyed. Uh, which was a problem in terms of putting content together for you guys. But I am located here in the sunny UK, but not for long. Because unfortunately, I will not be able to be with you. We will review the video on Monday. Uh, because I have to be on a plane in approximately two hours. Uh, I am off to Ireland to see some friends for the weekend. And I've never been to Ireland. And I'm promised that I must try Guinness. Because the way Guinness is made in the UK is terrible and tragic and awful. And only in Ireland can it be the best that it can ever be. So that's what I'm going to be doing. It is my delayed birthday trip with my wife. I'm looking forward to it very much. I'm sure the Irish are going to be very, very nice for us. Uh, so it's going to be beautiful, right? That's what's going to happen. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have a great old time. But that's not why you're here right now. We've been on an MMO journey. We played four different MMOs this week. <laughs> this week alone, we played four different MMOs. We've played EVE Online, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV's brand new patch, and MSQ, which has been amazing. Uh, and also, we have jumped into Guild Wars 2. We've been playing that this week, and we're playing a bit more of that on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, enjoying learning all these different MMOs and how they found and crafted their own direction. And seeing if they're any good is generally the aim of the game. Uh, but our primary goal is to clear the raid in these new raids. We will, of course, be adding Destiny 2 to that as well. They have a big new season starting in February. Uh, so we'll be jumping into that as well and seeing how the raiding works there. I'm told the raiding in Destiny 2 is fantastic. Uh, so we will be crawling our way across these MMOs to try out what's going on and uh, letting you know all about it. <clears throat> now, I've got some interesting stories in front of me. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get this one out of the way now, uh, in case I get banned for it, so at least I'll know, uh, if that's gonna happen, and it's just called the simp officer, oh god, how gross is this? That's, that's what I want to know, like, how simpy can you be? Uh, as we know from some drama times, very is the answer, very is the way it can be. Alright, and our star of today's show will be Vulgate. Vulgate, a wonderful website supporter. Thank you so much, everybody who supports us on the website. It helps us out, especially with our redecoration that's coming up. Uh, hopefully in a couple of months, we should be back in our offices. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Destiny 2 February is a new expansion and season. We'll be there. We'll be there to check it out and see what's going on. Let's have some fun, shall we? Mr. Preacher, I love your stuff. I have been an avid viewer for such a long time. On a personal note, I just wanted to compliment you on the consistency of your content you put out as long as you have. Never misses. And for the duration of this story, you can refer to me as wrist pain. Wrist pain. Okay. Wrist pain. I have a tale for you all today that is still going on now. Oh, God. Do we need to render judgment? <gasps> I don't know where my ban hammer is. It's just dawned on me. I don't know where the hammer is. Yeah, I don't know. It's not here. I don't know where that is. It might be in our storage unit. Half our studio is in the storage unit. Another half is with Mr. Jono. Shit. Yeah, I don't know where that is. Fuck. <laughs> I don't know. It might be under the sea. I don't know. Okay, anyway, this story is still ongoing as of today. And I want to tell you that this has been going on for a year and a half. It involves myself, a close friend, a tight-knit friend group of almost all family status, and what I can only assume is a self-appointed constable of Azeroth, our simp officer. All right, so we're in World of Warcraft. Okay. Let me set the scene for you guys. Red flags. Red flags everywhere. As far as the eye can see. Let me set the scene for you all. It is nearing the end of Castle Nathria raid progression. Cutting edge has been achieved. Our Mythic Plus pushing sessions are in full swing with myself and a girl gamer. Ooh. 
who is a friend of mine named Vulgate. Oh God, girl gamers, none of them around. They're a, they're a complete lie. <laughs> we were long-suffering alliance players. Oh, gross. At this time. And I've decided that we are clearly not the problem in not being able to time plus 23 keys. Oh, okay. You're too good for what you're doing. Okay. So we decided it was time for a little chat. We decide it is time to make a change and find better players. To find the best that Azeroth truly has to offer. Unfortunately, there was only one place where they existed. We needed to go to the Horde. That's right. That's right. We make the decision. And then we tell our close-knit friend group, which is generally like our little online family. Our long-lost e-daughter had gone Horde a few months ago, and we decided to go ahead and reunite with her on that server. The rest of the family follows, and we couldn't have been happier to be the people who initiated this decision. So, they made the call, and the friends decided to go with them. Fantastic. Now, while this is happening, Vulgate the girl gamer has installed ladies and gentlemen o b s yeah and she has begun to stream for fun sharing her, our chaotic antics with the world her stream started to gain some attention she got noticed by some decent sized streamers she networked with them and all is doing well. Do I know who this is? Is this Jordan? You don't think so? We never get told who it is. Okay. It could be Jess. It could be. I don't know. We'll see. Unfortunately... With this newfound success, we managed to get the attention of one of the spookiest and truly terrifying communities in WoW. Okay, it's North America. All right, so it's not Jess, it's not Jordan. Ladies and gentlemen, we caught the attention of the North American High Mythic Plus community. Do they have one of those in North America? Hmm. What's high in North America? Like, 19s? I'm not sure. No? Oh, they maybe have Dratnos 8s. <laughs> it's just Dratnos and Tettles. Hey! We're only joking. We're only joking. Relax. Relax. We played the rest of the season. We did pretty well achieving 25s across the board, which was progress we were happy with. I decided to take a step back from pushing to deal with some super serious adult stuff and logged in casually to play with the fam and cast spells with my friends. Vulgate, though, kept on pushing. Found herself another group, continued to network, and started climbing that Raider.io chart. So that's where we're up to. And here's where the catchy subject line of our submission comes into play. I log in one day. I'm doing some fun keys with some of our family and... Whisper in the pink pops up in my chat box. Which simply says this. I guess she's done with you. She has big boys now. Colon three. Mm. Mm. From a level one character on my server. What is that face supposed to represent? Is it a bum chin? It looks to me like a bum chin. I don't know what that one is. Uwu, it's a cat. It's a cat face. Oh, that's gross. Okay, that's gross. Why, why a cat face? Oh, that's so fucking weeb. Yeah, I'm not down. That's gross. It was from a level one character on the server. I elect not to reply as I'm 27 years old. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good 
On the list of reasons not to reply to someone, that's quite high up there. <laughs> because I'm 27 years old. But that did not stop our new friend. Oh, no. A minute or so later, another whisper in the pink comes flying through. A giga chad has her now. So much time wasted simping. Colon three. I want to be clear with something, Mike. I am not adding this emoji for dramatic effect. This is the mystery person's trademark. <laughs> okay, mystery person who uses that emote and says giga chad unironically. <laughs> <laughs> I never replied. But these whispers kind of made me laugh, and they continued for about two months. All similar in style. X has replaced you, cat face, etc., etc. I decided to keep these to myself to not make the antics of that mystery catter, cat face guy, become more than a simple annoyance. I think we give a name to this person. I choose Raven Rib. Yes, perfect. <clears throat> Catface guy will now be known as Raven Rib. Perfect. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I think it fits, honestly. Uh, <clears throat> I did. I kept these to myself to not make the antics of our mystery Raven become more than a simple annoyance for me. I started playing less and less, got caught up in life, focusing on some RL stuff, but nevertheless, every time I logged on, there this fucking guy was. Greeting me with a lovely message about how my friend is now done with me, catface, or hooked a bigger fish, catface. I'll admit, it started to get on my fucking nerves. My smile started to turn to frustration, but I didn't reply, and I had no intention of doing until I received a Discord friend request from a mystery user named Simp Officer. Oh, no. <laughs> I like Raven. <laughs> He's made a Discord account to send him messages. I've got to respect the hustle. I do. I have to respect the hustle. There's like a stage and a line. And he's like, fuck it. I'm going over the line. I'm making myself a Discord account. At this point that I received this friend's request, I had been off WoW for a full week. So I accepted it and like fucking clockwork, it's Catface. His first message to me via Discord was, We miss you, Catface. Followed by, Did you finally quit because she wants nothing more to do with you, Catface? I cracked... I'm sorry to say that I cracked and I replied. And I simply said, What is the end game here? You've literally been doing this for two months. It took a couple of minutes for a response to come through. Perhaps they were shocked that I'd actually typed a reply. But when they did, they said, I'm just doing my job as the official simp officer. And I have declared you as WoW's biggest simp, Catface. <sighs> After reading this, I am more or less done with whatever this joke is supposed to be. But needless to say, I just decided to dismiss it again until another message came through. Which I'm not going to get into details about, but I will tell you this. It included personal information about me that people shouldn't know, especially strangers. And a line had been crossed. This made me essentially hit the fuck it button and decide to distance myself from this situation as it was now getting into the creepy territory. I left our group Discord server. I turned off communications with the goal of moving past it because, again, I'm fucking 27 and I don't know what this shit is. This affected some relationships which have since been repaired because at the end of the day, we are like family with the guys that I was playing with. However, every time I got the urge to play World of Warcraft once a week, do a key with my friends, I would log on to the same familiar internet emoji face. The cat. 
Eventually, I take a four-month break around the end of season three after the consistent stream of cat faces all up in my pink. And I came back to the game about a month ago, Mike. I am back throwing elbows with my pals in Keystones, preparing for the new expansion. On that same very day, I came back. Now totaling five months. I immediately got catfaced. Immediately. I was online for less than 30 seconds before I got catfaced. I was then followed by the message, Oh, how we've missed you, catface. I questioned my sanity quickly. Has this really now been going on for a year and three months and I'm still getting catfaced? I don't know where this story goes, but I just want to tell you that I don't think I, I personally will ever hear the end of the rat. The internet is a persistent place. It really is. And it has an infinite memory. It never forgets. It never forgives. It never moves past. I will hear about rats and experience potions until my dying days on this online world, when the internet's become so fast that we can no longer talk, when the attention span of people has become less than two seconds, which means streaming is now no longer viable, I still will hear about rats and experience potions and chubs, apparently. <clears throat> you see, still keck Wing to this goddamn day. <sighs> I couldn't believe it. A year and three months, and I'm still getting whispered a message with cat face at the end. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're a dickhead. Just to confirm we've got the right person. Hold on. Just to confirm we have got the right person here. Uh... To explain for our audio listeners on our wonderful Spotify and Apple and uh, Google Music, Raven Rib whispers today at four eighteen p.m. I hope you're enjoying yourself in drama, Catface. <laughs> just to just to confirm that we have found the culprit, Arthur. Wrist pain. We have indeed found the culprit. Yes, we have. We found the culprit. And all this was happening to me simply because I had a female friend. That's all I could put it down to is that my friend was a girl. That's it. I have yet to find the answer, but I've now justified at this point that there is only one true reason. The guy is a fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah, I think we cracked that code. <laughs> yeah, I think we worked that one out. <laughs> it could be her. Maybe she misses you. Maybe she misses you. Oh, is that the end? It's still going on? I hope at the very least enjoy the, re uh, the read of this. Whoever filters through these and possibly Preacher. Keep up the content. Much love from the now frozen over Canada. All the best, and I wish you continued success. Okay, so that's where we're up to. What We need an update. We need to know who it is. You can't send us just the intro to the drama. We need to know the conclusion. Is it her? There must be a way of finding out. How could he find out? Chat detectives how can we find out who this person is they're whispering in game we've got a discord message can we find out who it is i don't think blizzard will blizzard would ban the account maybe i mean you could also just put them on ignore it's either her or one of another close dude backtrace it track their ip mm, i don't think we can do that mm. yeah you can you can ignore the person you'll be you'll be safe uh from that but uh <laughs> Is that? Uh, I need to read this because the title's got me intrigued. <laughs> the title has me intrigued. Uh, I want to make sure we've got time for this other one that Bex has sent us, but. <laughs> I need to know what this is about. Okay. I need to know. This, this this title has got me intrigued. This title has me intrigued. I need to know. I, I need to know what this is about. Uh, I need to know. I'm too curious. 
All right. We need two guild names, chat. Uh, there's no description of them, so any names you want. Para Sweepers and Titan's Anvil. Uh, is this financial advice? I don't know, Isaac. I have no idea. Thank you for your gifts on Steam, by the way, as always. Uh, the Doge Squad? Okay. And Ethereum. Okay. <laughs> the Doge Squad and the Ethereum. And Ethereum. All right. Perfect. Those, are, those, those seem to fit very, very well. Doge Squad and Ethereum will be our guild names. I, I don't know if this is going to be good or not. I just, the title's got me intrigued. Preacher, good afternoon. This is your favorite Drama Time Anonymous author. This is the second story I've sent you in all these years, where we're now in season 10 of Drama Time, to let you know. If anyone wants a refresher of who I am, because y'all loved me so much the first time, check out my story from series episode, season 9, episode 10, The Most Hated Wowadon. Yes, it's me. I'm back. The friend of the best hunter ever who created the guild invite add-on. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Yes. Yes, it's this guy. It's the guy. It's that guy. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> on a side note, Preacher, yes, I sold raid drop BOEs. Only if no one needed them. I'm not that scummy. All my raid members got upgrades first. After that, BOEs got sold and the gold split between my raiders. I don't remember the context of that, but I assumed you were a piece of shit. Um... I stand by my words. Okay. I don't need to change my mind. I'm sticking by my words. Okay. Now that you're giving me my second chance at judgment, I'm not. You're still judge. Yeah, the, the chat's all over it. You're guilty. <clears throat> and to all those in chat already judging me, shame on you for being wise because we're all very, very guilty. But now for more of my shameful decision making. All right. Like many of you, I've played World of Warcraft off and on since vanilla. I made many friends, forgotten many friends, equipped agility main hands on my warlock, clicked and keyboard turned until someone showed me in Westfall that you can keybind and use your mouse to turn. This story time is not about any of that, though. So sit down and buckle up your judgmental Twitch viewers. You YouTube ad-blocking scum and stuck-in-traffic Spotify listeners. As today... You hear two of my top regrets ever in World of Warcraft. That is an interesting story of what are your top regrets in WoW. Oof. I could probably do mine. One was killing my vanilla guild. It was unnecessary, but and I knew it was going to happen, and I did it anyway. Uh, what's the second regret I have in WoW? No, it's not XP pots. No, <laughs> I mean I do regret that, but it's not a top regret. <laughs> okay, I can't. I have to think about that one. The characters are myself, the author, Titans Anvil, the nicest, hard on his luck guild master of the Doge, squ Doge Squad, and Parasweepers, the wannabe pseudo intellectual officer. And Ethereum, another guild. The ZG Bank? Uh, no, I actually have no regrets about taking the ZG Bank. The officers were abusing the fuck out of it. And because I was in control of the ZG Bank, I knew who was fucking over the ZG Bank. I have zero regrets about the ZG Bank. At all. <laughs> At all, in any way. That system was get. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, I know what it is. Uh, my second top regret was being entrusted with uh the item that you got from doing uh you guys have probably played the burning crusade classic right uh the item that you i think they were called nether vortexes whatever the crafting item was that came from tempest keep and uh what else did we do at the time was it serpent shrine tempest keep and serpent shrine and being the first on the server to get the belting blast the belt of blasting recipe and m using the guilds ones to make two belts for the top guild on the server because i wanted an invite 
And I did not get that invite. Well, I did, but I got it after I wanted it and turned it down. So, yeah, that was that was a regretful choice. But I, it was a long time ago. <laughs> it's a long... You score. <laughs> I made them for the whole guild as well. That's outrageous. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to be invited before they killed Illidan because I wanted to be there for the first kill. And it was going to be... I think they got World 7th Illidan. Uh, but they stopped recruitment until after Illidan was dead. Uh, so I, I, I needed an in, I needed an in with those guys. I didn't know who they were. So I was like, Hey, I've got the belt of crafting recipe, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and made two of them. And then I turned them down because the whole guild showed up. They all started whispering me to like make them belts because I was making them for free. Uh, and then I was like, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> we have to put a stop on this. Uh, <laughs> we have to put a stop to this right now. I was like, that's not happening. No, 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 no. Uh, but thankfully in my defense, my guild was so shit that even though the item was Biss, none of them got the material. I got, I completely got away with it. None of them bothered to get the materials to get the belt crafted. None of them. And by the time they did, I had a fucking bank full of nether vortexes. I had so many. None of them bothered to get it. I think one mage who was a tryhard got it done. Everybody else just fucking ignored it and was like, ah, I can't be bothered. It's too expensive. Too much farming. Yeah, I got saved by our slack, which is why I wanted to leave the guild. The guild, because I, I got that recipe, and I was like, dudes, we can all get Belt of Blasting. Made mine, made one for this mage. I was like, all right, where's everybody else? And they were like, ah, I can't be bothered. Uh, so I did end up with a lot of them. So no one ever found out about that until I admitted it now. <laughs> uh, okay, anyway. <clears throat> I'm one of those players that plays the obvious, overbearing, fun class, Retribution Paladin. There's nothing likable about you, Arthur. Just irredeemable. 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 Like, not only... There's just nothing likable. <laughs> Everything you say is another nail in the coffin. Every, every sentence typed is another nail in the coffin. But after being burned out by the game in Wards of Draenor, I decided it was time for a little breaky break. Well, what would a drama story be if I wasn't playing? Chat, I ask you. What else would bring a Retribution Paladin player who has extremely fond memories of the Burning Crusade back to World of Warcraft? Why, yes. Yes, of course. What else would I come back for? Anyone else who hasn't figured it out yet, you are judged, you're judged guilty by me. Shame on you, except for the FF14 players. You get a pass this time. It was the greatest, most edgelord character ever. The Demon Hunter. That's right. After years of playing one of the most immobile classes, I orgasmed the first time I laid hands on that sexy green graphical character. With more tattoos and mobility than a five-year-old who just downed a large Slurpee in a 7-Eleven screaming at their stepmom for more candy as they run circles around them. That was an elaborate metaphor. So I came back to get in touch with my inner emo phase from high school. Just with a lot less hair, so I couldn't straighten it in real life anymore. Oh, sad face, hashtag bald life. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag bald life. Now, I've been an active listener of Preacher. Your tutorial videos helped me improve my rating to learn weak auras, better positioning. But the most important thing that Preach teaches is find a good guild. My man, Redemption Arc. Finding a good guild at the end of an expansion so you set up for the start of the next expansion. So here comes the Doge Squad. They accepted my Retribution Paladin. And they were cool with me re-rolling to Demon Hunter when Legion dropped. The Doge Squad was a cutting-edge mythic guild. They took a chance on me and gave me the best opportunity. Came in at the beginning of their Archimon progress and we took him down. I even was the very last player to get the mythic mount the last raid before Legion came out. I was excited. Titan Zadville was one of the nicest GMs I'd ever met. The Doge Squad had a great group of people with a wonderful, patient raid leader. Except there was one officer who craved more who believed he was playing at a different level than the rest of us. Parasweeper. So the first raid of Legion opens up. We clear heroic, no issues. We're a mythic raiding guild. Mythic opens up. Night one, we make it all the way to the boss that was known for being a roadblock. Yes, we spent the entire first... 
mythic raid knight wiping on Nythendra. <laughs> yes. Our first roadblock was boss one in Emerald Nightmare that is literally free loot. We wiped on Nythendra Mythic for four hours. Ouch. That's a bad night. That's a bad night. Now, you may wonder, how does a guild that kills Mythic Archimond with tiny roster changes, at best, wipe on fucking Nythendra? It was Parasweepers. The hero. The self-proclaimed god of the guild. Parasweepers is why. So let me tell you a little background on our boy. Parasweepers is an officer of the Doge Squad. He's one of those Midwesterner rednecks. <laughs> the only reference I have for a Midwesterner redneck is Jesse. <laughs> and that's really unfair. But he just tells me it's no... Where he comes from is cows, corn, and Christ. That's all I know. That's my, like... That's my only relation to a Midwestern redneck is Jesse. <laughs> cows, corn, and Christ, as he keeps telling me, is where he comes from. He's one of those Midwestern rednecks who thinks they're really smart because they live in a tiny bubble and don't know shit outside of their own town. Now, I don't have a problem with rednecks. My family is made up of Canadian rednecks, a.k.a. hoses. <laughs> I have problems with people who think they're fucking clever and are not and refuse to listen to anyone else. The reason we wiped was because Parasweepers had his own strats that he had developed. Oh my god. He decided we'd split the room in... I need to remember how we did this fight. The tricky part about Nythendra Mythic was mind control. You had to get mind controlled in a staggered fashion. Wasn't that it for Nythendra? You just got mind controlled in a staggered fashion so that the whole raid didn't get mind You just had to take some intentional stacks, right? And so like half of you got it and then the other half got it later on, right? <laughs> I think that's all it was for Nythendra. We would split the room in half and only use one half of the room. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> For what reason? For anyone who doesn't remember, Nythendra had an ability called Infested Mind. At 10 stacks, you got infected, deal AoE damage to friendlies. Oh, did you not get mind controlled? I thought you did. Nythendra would also turn and shoot a frontal cone at someone. Also, oh, it created pools of goop on the floor. That was right, because I was a mage. I had to bait the ghouls, the, the pools. <clears throat> and also would create pools of goop on the ground from its other mechanic. So we spent the entire night wiping because we filled half the room. And Parasweepers would refuse to let us use the other half. Why? Why? Uh, is there something wrong with that side of the room? Why? <laughs> I don't understand. I'm trying to figure out like a reason. I'm thinking of something in the fight that may result in you not wanting to use the other half of the room. I think we used half the room, then you swap it in halfway through. So you got loads of room. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> During the raid at one point, I suggest we just move to the other side of the room because it's empty. But I was told no. Okay. <laughs> sure. I just stand over there. What are you going to do? Okay. Night 2 comes along. Sure enough, we used the entire room. And we killed Nythendra in two pulls. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. I don't know. I wish I had footage of this. I so wish I had footage. Now. This also created a problem. Because I had been vocal the night before. And Parasweepers no longer liked me. I wasn't rude. I didn't treat him any differently. 
But I do remember shooting the shit in Raid one night, and this moment has stuck with me for literally years. I brought up how I enjoy Preach's YouTube channel for his constant tips and tricks, which helped during raiding. Parasweepers laughs and tells me that Preach is stupid and overrated. Maybe not the exact phrasing, but he definitely thought you were a dumb cunt. You really enjoyed typing that out, didn't you? You did. You did. You you wrote that with a big old smile on your face, didn't you? Yeah, you did. I remember. <laughs> <clears throat> I knew at this point that Parasweepers didn't like me. He thought he was amazing. And case in point, I started to get sat on progression night. Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, no. This was interesting. I was one of the lucky players who got a good Lego. Oh, no. <laughs> You're seeing a good Lego? Oh, you absolute fucking idiot. Oh, you do not sit a good Lego. <clears throat> In fact, I had gotten two of the top four Legos. Smiley face. I was consistently one of our top three deeps and was good. I didn't fail any mechanics. This is optional for Preach to show. Here's a snip of my rankings for Emerald Nightmare. No, I'm not the best in the world, but during Legion was the best I had played to that point. Uh, this is fine. Yeah, let me give it an old zoomy zoom. All right, log assessment. Uh, let me hide your character name. Yeah, there we go. All right, so for our audio listeners, we've got an average performance of 80. Uh, Nithendra, 97. Ilganoth, an 86. And Ilganoth is a scuff fight anyway. You have to pad the fuck out of that fight to get a good ranking. Uh, Elareth, 95. Ursoc, 96. That's good. Dragons of Nightmare, which is a scuffy fight as well, 74. A 9 on Scenarius... Were you doing some sort of weird job? Like maybe the kiter? <clears throat> Could have been a kiter. Xavius logs don't count. I'm not sure if they ever updated this, so you, it didn't count for tentacle pad in the last phase. Uh, he's tanking. Uh, so... What would the tank be doing at Dragons of Nightmare? You might be getting outdone uh, at Scenarius even. Oh, you could have been the AFK tank. Yeah, that makes sense. Who occasionally tanked the uh, dragons that landed. Yeah, that's very possible. That makes a lot of sense. These logs are good. There's no problem here. I imagine that's what's causing the... The uh, the disruption in the logs there. So I think we're happy with those logs. <clears throat> now. Now we started to have roster issues. No surprises. Our progress in Emerald Nightmare was not good. We ended up picking up a group of players from another Mythic Guild. But for some reason we called it Emerge. Even though they only brought three to four players. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's not a match. It turns out Parasweeper had been working on picking up this group. And they wanted to lead our raid group as our raid leader was getting burnt out. And for Legion, he rolled to DPS Hunter instead of tanking. And he could just not DPS and raid lead. Yeah, we've seen that before. He was a fantastic raid leader tank, but could not DPS. First week with the merges, we do Ursoc Reclear. And he dropped our first melee trinket we've been hunting. Oh, what the fuck was the name of that thing? That people were badgering me to run them through it even at the end of Legion for that stupid trinket. What the fuck was that thing called that all the melee in the world wanted? S so frustrating. The rent Was it the Rending Paw? I swear to God, like... Having the fucking melee moan at us to go and do Ursoc Mythic when we were working on whatever the end of fucking Legion was. This trinket was given to one of the newest players instead of our core players. I immediately called that shit out on comms. It wasn't my best move, but fuck them. I knew what the fuck was going on here. They were a group of good, toxic players, a.k.a. the asshole click. They were using us to gear themselves up so they could go and jump to another guild. I had no problem with getting them gear, but to take the trinket the first week on their very first kill with us, fuck that. We all know how significant trinkets are. You need to prove you're going to be team players, but unfortunately, <clears throat> Parasweepers was, in his words, being a good negotiator. Deep-throwing them. <laughs> 
because he thought they were the next best thing and was buddy buddying with them because they claimed he was the best raid leader they'd ever seen oh yeah you were amazing he's so good i can have the trinket are you sure are you sure I... you know what that's why i like you, you you've, you've got this like real nice mentality about what's good for the team you make us feel so welcome i look my trinket okay i'll take it i'll take it if you think it's the right decision if you think it's the right decision but i trust your decision making i really do i trust your decision making you, you're so wise that's the word i don't often use but i feel it applies to you wise thank you thank you for the trinket thank you very much <clears throat> now we did get cutting edge in emerald nightmare but we could not kill Mythic Hellia. And that's when the merge group, including Parasweepers, left immediately. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we kept recruiting more and more, but as Nighthold came along, we just couldn't keep up recruitment as people kept leaving the game. Now, here's my two biggest regrets. I can't remember how exactly it happened, but Titan's Anvil and I were hanging out, and he asked me what I thought about Bitcoin as I'm an accountant IRL. I'm a corporate accountant not a tax accountant titan's anvil was working a skilled but lower paying job and was struggling a bit financially at this point bitcoin was around a hundred dollar dues or something and what do i say to titan's anvil bro i don't even believe in bitcoin sometimes i lie in bed to this day thinking about that conversation and hoping that Titan's Anvil ignored me. <clears throat> I've hated myself so much over this stupid, seemingly innocent conversation. Look, did you believe it at the time? There aren't many people who believed in Bitcoin when it was $100. Right? You can't think of life that way. You can't. It's not like we all knew that GME was going to blow up or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you can't think of it that way. Bitcoin is comically stupid, like, in how it's gone and where it's, what's happened with it. Like, there's no predicting that. <laughs> it's just fantasy money that sometimes might work and sometimes might not. Like, it's just fucking all over the place. That's why we've got Dogecoin and fucking Pizza Coin and uh, didn't Ice Poseidon make his own coin at some point? like everybody was jumping in on that shit man like it was just it was a complete fucking wild west of what that shit was bread coin <clears throat> yeah yeah the people who got where's drama coin yeah athene had two coins preach coin yusha coin yeah there was a, there's tons of that stuff out there dudes uh like you can't you can't blame yourself for that if you uh, truly at the time believed that that's okay that's the way it was I haven't seen Titan's Anvil in years as he quit the game in Nighthold, and part of me is scared to ever see him again. If he didn't buy Bitcoin, also, <clears throat> I'm not sure what Bitcoin is today. That dude might have probably sold when it hit $200, right? People are like that. People are like that. They might have just sold the second it hit $200, right? That's that's what happens with a lot of people. They get they don't have diamond hands. That's what it is. You need them diamond hands, baby. You need them fucking diamond hands to get through it. That's what it's got to be. So a lot of people are like, oh god, I've doubled my money, which is still great. I doubled my money. That's fine. Like, there's you know nothing wrong with that. Uh, <clears throat> if he never did buy Bitcoin though, because of that conversation, I would never let that down because that would have given financial freedom. It's not your responsibility to give somebody else financial freedom. It's not. My second regret is my loyalty to the Doge Squad. That guild was the best time I've ever had in a guild, even as it was dying. All the players in it were wonderful, helpful people. They just didn't have the skill at the end, and we didn't have the energy to keep recruiting and replacing. I was good friends with a few players, and we would stay up till 5 or 6 a.m. in the morning, running Mythics, having a blast, and then I'd go to work at 8 a.m. Not that I could ever do that again. No, same. I can't do that either. During the end of Emerald Nightmare, our realm's number two guild, Ethereum, hit me up as they needed a demon hunter. Ethereum was a top 200 world guild. The Doge squad was 1200. And as of today, Ethereum is now a top 10 guild in the world. Bex and Preach can see the guild name on WoW Progress. They reached out to me and I said no. 
Because I didn't want to leave the Doge squad. All I've wanted in World of Warcraft is to progress. I wanted to see the hardest content and beat it. Was I actually good enough to last in Ethereum? I don't know. Maybe I could have lasted. Maybe being around a guild with players that strong would have helped me succeed more, or maybe I would have failed. Okay. I don't. Uh, you might join them later, but let me tell you this. <laughs> One of the biggest... Everybody knows that when I first joined Method, it did not go well. <laughs> I was treated very badly, as, was, as were the recruits that I brought with me. Uh, they were treated extremely badly. It was a very toxic environment. But, but in their defense, in their defense, and this may have happened to you as well, the reason that the core roster of the guild was very, very not welcoming, like almost universally to new players, is because the top guilds at the time, and it's way different now, like the recruitment process for the top guilds in the world is very different now. But at the time, a huge, huge portion of their recruitment process would go into players who kind of had the same mentality of you. Can I survive here? Am I good enough? And often what would happen is people would not get kicked and then be happy with that and then leave when it actually came to the hardcore rating. And you probably would have been in that box, to be honest with you. You probably would have been in that box. Like, it's... It was not as hardcore as it is now. Like, you're not traveling the world to raid and shit like that and having goofballs like me comment over you. But it was... It was a very, very difficult time. It really was. You can't sit with us, mean girl. It, 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 was, it was understandable that they had thrown tons and tons of resources at players who just wanted to find out if they were good enough. But when it came to, like, seven days a week, hours and hours, 10, 12 hours for those times... The reality is most people just don't want to do that. Not that they can't, but they just don't want to at all in any way. And they drop out. But I don't know what your schedule was like, but yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's a tough way. I wanted to stay with the Doge squad and help them succeed. And by the time I realized that the Doge, squad was, the Doge squad was dead in Nighthold, I'd burned myself out. I had stepped up in Doge squad and raid led that guild to 5 out of 10 Mythic. But myself and the officers decided after our Spellblade of the Oriole kill, there is no fucking way I'm continuing leading people who had to be micromanaged when farming a square. <laughs> well, the problem with squares, Cloggy, do you understand the problem with squares? It's the lack of circles. So it makes no sense, right? That's the issue. That's the issue you have with squares is there's no circles. Yeah, too many corners. <laughs> Too many, too, not just not enough circles to go in a square. It's a real tricky thing that raid leaders have to deal with. We bled, we bled hard. I'm sure there's plenty of praises uh, for. I'm sure there's a lot of people here who can associate with this. We bled and we bled hard. We bled our good players. I followed some of them to a guild that ended up to 10 out of 10 mythic in Nighthold. Unfortunately, after we killed Elisan, Blizzard announced more artifact weapon farming, and I just gave up. <laughs> I was tired. I was done. I wanted off this treadmill. The exact same reason that Preachy left. That's why I left before getting my Gul'dan kill. Oh, you don't leave before Gul'dan. Fuck that. You don't leave after Elisand. The story isn't as directional as my first story. More a build up to my regrets of what could have been if it wasn't too stupid and loyal. I don't think you should feel regret about any of these things. I really don't. I think you could absolve yourself. I would not. I personally would not have regret about any of these things. Staying in a guild where you're having fun and you think it can work, is fine. It doesn't always work out, but that's how you felt at the time. Uh, and the Bitcoin thing, that's just the way it went. And at the time, you wouldn't. I probably weren't wrong. It, it, it turned out wrong in the end, but I mean, that's life, right? <laughs> we don't. You can't plan for what's going to happen. Sort of like seven years later, that's that's not going to work out. I, I I wouldn't regret any of those things. I did come back to the game, though. I got Cutting Edge and Antorus, Old Ear, and Battle for Dazzle Law with some different nerds. But that's another story for another time. Maybe I'd still be playing today with uh, Ethereum. Mm, nah. <laughs> Probably not. And they consistently progressed. Obviously, there are top 10 world guilds still around today. Maybe Titan's Anvil could have become a Bitcoin millionaire. 
Well, sadly, I said no to both of these, and at this time, I don't even play WoW as I need to focus on finding a relationship as I'm not getting any younger. Oh, shit, he's on the prowl. He's on the prowl. Thank you, Preacher and Chat. Until next time, don't be scared to jump ship on a dying guild. You can still be friends with old guildies while playing in a different realm. This is uh, a game, not a war. You can still talk with the enemy and have fun. True, true, true. Uh, I've got like eight minutes left, but I need to go and get on a plane. So we're going to stop there. But yeah, uh, I learned this lesson in vanilla. I stay with my guild all the way to the ends of vanilla while other chody buttlickers like Nups uh, left our guild dead early and just abandoned us which is rude so you know i stuck it out i stuck it out uh i'm off to ireland for my little birthday weekend with my wife i will be back on sunday there'll be no stream disruption at all uh that's not going to be an issue so nothing to worry about there and after drama time on youtube you do have part two of our trip to blizzard uh it is coming out very shortly i'm not sure i think it's scheduled for six or five i'm not entirely sure what chris has scheduled it for but it will be out for you shortly so hope you enjoy that we'll go through it on monday uh for any questions and stuff that you guys have but it's going for eight o'clock there you go there you go chris has got the link for you there uh there will be premiere there'll be a live chat maybe i've landed by then i'm i think my flight is in an hour and 12 minutes uh so maybe i could be in chat with you as well uh if i can it'll be great all right be good and uh, maybe I'll see you tonight. But if not, I'll definitely see you on Monday. Be awesome, guys. Bye-bye.